Hey everybody, glad to have you back here with me today. And before I get started, I'd like to share with you some good news. I actually finally found a couple hours of clear skies. This means I was able to record what I believe is the final portion of video three for the mini PC build series. So we're at least one step closer now. But since I've had so many clouds lately and could only film those types of videos, I want to stick with the topic of fanless mini computers. And you know lately I've been talking about the popular Melee Quieter 2 and Quieter 3 systems. Today's discussion is going to be targeted at those two platforms, but could certainly extend to many other fanless systems. From the feedback I've gotten, many of you have been using these systems for quite a while, and several of you are considering rebuilding the operating system because, you know, Windows. Then there are also many of you who are just now getting or are about to get a new fanless system. And people in both groups are actually adding NVMe SSD drives as an upgrade as well. So since putting out my videos, there's been two major questions in relation to the topic of fanless systems. The first question was about power, and the second question was about temperature. From a power perspective, I was asked by several people how they can power these Melee systems because they use a 12-volt USB-C interface on the unit. And that's actually an interesting question because most USB-C interfaces these days use PD power, which is a negotiating protocol to determine how much power should be sent to a connected device. Well, the Melee uses a USB-C interface, but very specifically tells you it does not support PD power. So it gets a little bit tricky when looking for a way to run this off a battery. So let me tell you what I did, which was to make my own power cable using a USB-C pigtail cable like this one here. Since I use Anderson power pole connectors for my equipment, I just terminated the ends with a power pole connector. For the cables I got from Amazon, the manufacturer told me the white cable is positive and the black was negative, so it was a pretty easy job. Powered it up, and everything works as expected. For those of you interested in this type of power distribution mechanism, I'll try to remember to link it in the description as well. There are certainly alternative ways to running power, but I like this particular mechanism because it allows me to run off a single 12 volt DC power supply from my AC outlets while at home, but it's also something I can quickly disconnect and reconnect to my battery box when in the field. No need to do anything else. And it also allows me to get away from the unfortunate Astro standard of cigarette lighter style adapter plugs, which are so easy to accidentally disconnect in the middle of a session. So for these systems, there was a relatively easy way for me to adapt power. If anyone else has suggestions of working off the shelf cables, please let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to update the video description to reflect those options as well for everyone else. Oh, and don't post links in the comments. YouTube will automatically delete that entire comment. If you need to send me a link, go to my YouTube page about section and send me an email using the address you find there. That way I'll actually get the link. Now on to the temperature concerns I keep hearing about. I wanna start this part of the conversation off by saying, there's a lot of people who have been using Quieter 2 and Quieter 3 systems for a while now. And certainly I've seen mention of them getting hot, as do all fanless designs, but I haven't seen a whole bunch of people jumping ship and moving away from them because of this fact. I also know there was a concern about running them outdoors, more particularly during the daytime for solar imaging. And honestly, this should always be a concern with any computer you're gonna run in direct sunlight. You should absolutely shade the device as a minimal precaution. What I was more focused on though, was the temperature of the device during operation, understanding the normal temperatures I can expect and seeing if I could do anything about it cost effectively. It should be noted that I tested this at home in Atlanta, Georgia this week when outdoor temperatures at midday during testing were in the upper 90s Fahrenheit and the heat index was around 108 degrees Fahrenheit. As far as the testing goes, from a temperature perspective, I did take some readings with an infrared thermometer, but more importantly, I monitored the reported CPU core temperatures via a tool named Core Temp. And before you run off and download it yourself, the link is in the description. Make sure you click more downloads and then get the standalone version. I never use the installer based version for free tools like this when I can avoid it. I don't want to give it any additional opportunity to install any extra junk on my system. With that being said, Core Temp is a well known CPU monitor. The CPU core temperatures are going to be more important than the external box temperatures. When running, if your computer reaches very high temperatures, you can run into performance issues and even risk damaging your system. Now, before I go into my testing, I do want you to realize that Melee did put some effort into their fanless design. They are using a case made of special material that is designed to dissipate heat according to the equipment that it is housing and an expectation of operating under normal use. It is expected within the design that your computer will be sitting flat 
with the top of the case pointing upward so that heat from the board will rise evenly through the upper portion of the case and dissipate as expected. Standing this box on an edge or upside down or covering it even with a single piece of paper can completely invalidate the design principles of this or any fanless case. Back to that single piece of paper. Even a single sheet of paper can create a small buffer of air between the case and itself that thermally would trap heat and cause problems. So with that being said, can someone explain to me why Melee puts two stickers on top of their cases? During my testing, at one point I removed the two stickers. This included the power adapter warning label and the Windows logo sticker. After removing these two stickers, I consistently got my system to test out five degrees Celsius lower than in my first trial run test. This is absolutely crazy to me in a fanless design to make that sort of an error. So step one, if you have one of these computers, go pull the stickers off the cover right now. You don't need to take the sticker off the base, just the two on top. After my test trial runs, and before I ran and recorded the formal final test, I went on Amazon and purchased an aluminum heat sink that was roughly the size of the Quieter 3. It's an aluminum fin-based heat sink design. This only cost me around 13 US dollars. Now typically when you apply a heat sink to a device, you would use thermal paste or thermal glue to bond the surface to the heat sink evenly and promote heat transfer. In my test, I only placed the heat sink on top. I literally just put it there and let it be. If you're not familiar with heat sinks or the related thermodynamic principles, heat is always gonna flow from higher temperatures to lower temperatures. By sitting the heat sink on top of the Quieter 3, the heat leaving that box went into the base of the heat sink, which is a thicker piece of aluminum, and then it radiated the heat it received out through the thin fins. The fins are important because it gives us a lot more surface area to dissipate the heat into the surrounding air. So what did I find? I got pretty good results from the heat sink, but before I get a million questions, Again, the size is about the same as the Melee Quieter 2 or Quieter 3, and it only weighs just under a half pound, or less than a quarter kilogram. As always, I'll put the link in the description for anyone that's interested. And since it's an Amazon link, and I am an Amazon affiliate, I would get some amount of compensation, so just FYI, Amazon makes me say that. But you can get these types of heat sinks from many different vendors, and there are so many different types out there. So depending on the system you're using, you might wanna try one that's a different size, or maybe even a slightly different design. Honestly, I was just blown away by the results and the fact that I only had to set it on top and that was enough for an effective heat transfer to take place was amazing. Actually, thinking back, I don't know if I was more surprised by removing the stickers or the heat sink. It turned out to be a pretty good testing day. Miserably hot outside, but great results. All right, so let's get to the test results so you can see if you think any of this is worth it or just to understand what you can expect out of your own system. Here's the layout for the test results. In a minute, I'll go through section by section of the results using the log data that the core temp application provided to me. The graph data will scroll from right to left. There are going to be three graphed plots. In the middle, we have the average CPU percentage of the four N5105 cores in the quieter three. When busy, it'll approach or be at 100% CPU utilization. When idle, it should approach 0%. But you'll see several times that even though your use of the system is idle, Windows is always doing something. Also remember that I'm connected via RDP and running the Windows Task Manager and Core Temp application throughout this test period, so there is extra CPU consumed by those background tasks. I mentioned CPU first because the CPU workload will be directly related to the power draw graph graph at the bottom of the screen and the temperature at the top. As you'll see soon, the power draw graph at the bottom tended to settle in either between 4 to 5 watts or 8 to 9 watts for most of the testing. The temperature will spike or drop based on the CPU load, but you should pay attention to the upward or downward trending of the temperature and where it settles in over time. Remember, this is a reporting of CPU core temperatures and not just a thermometer sitting in the middle of the case. Core temp was logging every one second during my testing period. And before we start playing the data here, this was all done after I removed the two stickers from the case. I'm still trying to sort that one out. Okay, let's go. First, I booted the system and let it run for about two minutes to acclimate the CPU temperatures. The timing for each portion of the test will be displayed at the bottom right. Since this is the first graphing we've seen, let me explain it a little. The CPU spiked initially as Windows did some background stuff. You can see that after the initial work and a spike here and there, the CPU settled in very low around 0% utilization. The resulting power draw settled in around four watts or just under. 
and the temperature after the initial workload started to drop and settle in just over 50 degrees Celsius. Okay, an important concept here. You should be asking what temperature levels are expected in the first place. Otherwise, we aren't really learning anything right here. There are several places to track this down, but generally speaking, under 60 degrees Celsius is good. Going above 70 is starting to get a little bit concerning and you should start looking at cooling options for prolonged use. Over 80 is too hot and you should start to worry about damage to the computer. And 90 or higher is just dangerous and could result in permanent damage to the CPU. A spike here and there is not the end of the world, but prolonged high temps are concerning. So far, so good. Let's move on and I'll drop the heat sink on here just to see what happens. As you can see, the heat sink, just by sitting on top of the mini PC, drop the temperature almost immediately. It's hovering around 40 degrees Celsius when idle. Of course, workloads will push it past this as the CPU and wattage increases, but for the most part, an impressive initial first test. This was about 13 minutes of idle use. Then I pulled the heatsink off and set it aside. The heatsink had definitely gotten noticeably warm, so I know it was working. I now let the system sit without the heatsink for about eight minutes, and there was some background processing during this time, but we can see the average temp settled in under 50, so maybe only six degrees Celsius difference than with the heatsink applied. At this point in my testing, I started SharpCap and connected my ASI 174mm camera. It was just doing a live view on screen. This was just two minutes or so, but you can see the consistent CPU usage and wattage is causing the temperature to begin to climb gradually. Now I started the first real imaging test. This is the Quieter 3 without a heat sink running sharp cap that is performing a series of 30 500 frame mono 16 captures without any gaps in between the captures. You can see the constant processing and power draw is causing the temp to cross 70 up to around 75 Celsius. Even at the very end of the testing section, when the test had completed and the CPU dropped, the temp remained in place. I followed that test with another similar test, but this time with another 30 captures using 2000 frames each. You can see we're sitting just under 80 degrees Celsius, which is right at the point where damage can begin to occur if you have prolonged use here. But in all fairness, it's under 80 here, so it appears the fanless case is doing its job. Hot, yes. Damaging, no. This last capture was about 22 minutes of testing. Next, I just let the system sit for about three minutes. The temp did continue to rise into the low 80 range, but just briefly. Under use, it really seemed like it wanted to stay right around the high upper 70s. Okay, the next thing I did is put the heat sink back on top of the box. I just placed it here and let it sit for about six minutes to see the effect. You can see we dropped quite a bit to just above 60 Celsius where it settled in. Then I reran test one with the heat sink. It climbed a little, but seemed to want to stay in the mid 60s this time. Then I reran the 22 minute test two capture and it stayed just under 70 Celsius. Just like the other test after it ended, the temp for some reason did rise just a little bit, crossing 70 in this case, but not 80 as it did without the heat sink. Since I was done with my image testing, I then closed sharp cap, and you can see how the decreased system load dropped the temperature under 50. But since the task manager was still active, it did rise a bit. You can see though that when I terminated the task manager, the temperature trend was falling as I stopped my testing. So what did we learn? Well, fanless boxes run hot, but that shouldn't be a surprise. I mean, it's fanless. Melee seem to do a pretty good job of actually keeping their boxes below 80 degrees Celsius, even under continued load and in unbearably hot Atlanta, Georgia. So for everyone out there that says they run hot and the case was really hot, you're not wrong, but it isn't quite to the point where damage could occur. Well, as long as you take the two stickers off the top of the case anyway, and go do that now before you forget. Also, don't forget the design principles. Shade it from the sun, keep it relatively flat, and don't put anything on top of it. Want to cool it off some more so you stay further away from the damage zone? Get a cheap heat sink and set it on top. If you choose to use thermal glue, use a thin layer and spread it evenly, and also avoid air bubbles. So did I answer your questions and address your concerns? Good, well I hope.
I'll try to get that last mini PC video out the door very soon. Just way too much editing to get it out the door, but it gets a bit closer every day. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share with others. Of course, leave me comments or send me a message if needed. Now go take some pictures, and of course, clear skies.